All right, hey friends. I it's been a while since I set up my camera and my mic, uh, and you know I want to make my videos slightly higher quality if I can, if it doesn't require me to hold my phone so I can move my hands around. Anyway, uh, don't really have an elaborate plan. I've been pretty tired lately, and you know I've been thinking. I got COVID a while back. Uh, I I don't know if I made a video about recovery. I did. I'm looking at my channels now. Yeah. I've made four videos since I got COVID. I chatted with Dinesh recently, a few days ago. Talked about effort and reward, solving for distribution. Anyway, you know, and, you know, a part of me has been thinking, I don't know if I mentioned this in my other videos, but like, should I start my videos with in a quick introduction of myself again for all the new people? Because I, I find it kind of tedious, but, you know, it's like, it's a slight tax on current viewers right, that they're going to sit through the first 10 seconds of, hi, I'm Visa, I make videos about, like, that are secular sermons for friendly, ambitious nerds, and we're looking for a more, you know, interesting scene of people, or curious nerds, whatever. But, you know, I might end up doing that, maybe, so, heads up, warning. Uh, I don't want, I don't really want to, but if, if the result is that the channel grows a little bit faster, I think that's worthwhile for me as a creator so yeah that's the thing i've been thinking about a bunch right like creator audience fit and i'm thinking about it with my, my videos not so much although when i think about it i start to think about it but i'm thinking about it with regards to like my books my tweets um, the essays that i want to be writing and how much do i want to focus on what's on my mind no sorry how much do i want to focus on what feels right for me versus what feels right for my body of work versus what feels right for any given member of the audience that I'm thinking of and or a reader, right? Or what's good for growing that audience potentially, right? And I know myself well enough to know that I'm never, I'm, and I'm, I'm too old for some of this shit. I'm, I'm 32, uh, which, which, you know, there are older people who do crazy shit, but like, I I think being sensible is something that I pride myself on and I don't see myself doing weird outrageous shit to court views or whatever you know like I huh, I where was I going with that I just I guess I guess so. The, a feeling that I've been having for some time is is frustration, right? Just annoyance that things aren't moving faster in some ways. You know, frustrated with myself for not writing more. Uh, and then I have to investigate that, right? Like, why? Why am I? And part of it is is money. You know, I'm not selling as many books as I would like, uh, and and I'm not getting as many consulting clients as I would like. But I haven't been doing. I haven't gone all out in soliciting clients and even now as i say these things out loud i wonder am i am i like um presenting weakness but uh, you know and, and you know, that may be less than ideal in some sense but it's one of those things where you're trying to optimize the front and then you neglect the back end like the psychological back end so if you're trying to optimize for the psychological front end or like the the superficial front of things right the the, the presentation and inwardly you feel like a fraud or you feel dissatisfied you feel like you're not having a good time you're not enjoying yourself then the whole operation dies right and so i try to optimize for survival which means my psychology as a creator is the most important thing and if it means that i'm gonna you know upset some people or frustrate or annoy some people who as audience members right like if people who are watching think ah oh, why am i watching this guy he's so annoying or why he takes so long to get to the point like Ugh, it's not for me that's fine that i would much rather have those people be unhappy and and you know like, i'm nobody to them right they're just they're just passing through or whatever but if the alternative is in trying to make them happy i make myself unhappy that's a losing game right and i don't i intend to play my game for a very long time so i think jeff bezos might have a quote somewhere about like you, you've got to be willing to be misunderstood for a long period of time if you want to do anything substantial and yeah you know i am okay with my choices am i um 
You know, I read a passage in um, Focusing by Gendlin, right? And there was something about this idea of a felt sense where you try on a few, and this is me paraphrasing it, but it's like you try on some explanation of your own behavior. And if it's not quite right, you don't feel it. And when you get it right, there's a, there's a, there's a relief. You feel, ah. Oh. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to rope. I'm trying to like, like, present it, but it's not true. So it feels false. It's not like where I, I will know it when I feel it. So I was having a conversation with my friend Pragya a couple of days ago, and you know, I started the call with her, kind of, um, kind of tense, kind of anxious, kind of, you know, like, uh, you know, we agreed to have. We we said we we're going to talk about these things, and so I'm going to talk to you about this bunch of stuff and blah blah blah. And over the course of the conversation. Just being present with someone else who I can trust to understand where I'm coming from and I don't have to like use caveats and be like, oh, I actually, I don't, I don't, you know, um, caveats like what? Like, you're going to misunderstand me and so preemptively worrying about how one might be misunderstood, right? Like, um, that is almost necessary to some degree if you're trying to be a public figure, if you're trying to tweet on main to thousands of people. And you know, I'm on my YouTube. I'm still small, so it doesn't really matter. But like, as it grows, it will eventually kind of be a thing. Maybe uh, depends on how you grow it and all of those things. But it's just such a relief to be in the presence of someone who values you, validates you, is tries to be understanding, um, doesn't flinch, doesn't kind of um, get tense at you. Right, and so when they, they and so the phrase "hold space," I never really understood it. However, people mean it. I'm holding space for you, but um, it, it's that right? Like uh, it's saying to someone else and and communic and conveying it not just with your words, but like with the way that you you re- receive their energy or like and when I say energy, it's like body language and um, what you nod along to, what you agree with, what you ask questions about how you support them right and when you do all of that people relax uh i had another friend luli i know you watched some of my videos i don't know if you're going to be in here Uh, i met her when i was in san francisco the last time i was there and we met for coffee and she is just so good at um like being a, a welcoming presence for someone and I underestimate the degree to which I appreciate having that energy in my life. You know, I don't... I think some people assume, oh, here's a guy who wrote a book called Friendly Ambitious Nerd and he's like hyper-social online. He's talking to people all the time. He must be hanging out with people all the time or he must be on Zoom calls all the time. And both of those things are not true. Not as true as I wish they were. And uh, it's true that when I have calls with people, I it tends to go really well. I, I do these things called inter-intellect salons. I haven't done one in a while, but whenever I do them, it's always so good because I really get to experience people. And I think, yeah, I, I recurringly forget that um, Twitter, which is where I spend most of my time, and I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to switch to writing Substack posts, essays. Uh, Twitter, where I spend most of my time, it can be kind of adversarial. You know, even even with people that I trust and admire. Uh, it's a very low context environment. People are scrolling on their phones and you don't know what state they're in and you don't know how they're going to read your tweets. So if you want to tweet well in my in my model, right, which is not, you don't have to agree with. But um, for me, tweeting well means anticipating being misunderstood, which might seem like a lot to take on. But uh, if you do that, you do get to enjoy most of the benefits while kind of uh, like tai chiing away, like kind of um, um, nudging away or, or pushing away, sliding away the the negative stuff. And it is, it does require effort. I find I don't know if everyone feels the same, but uh, I'm I'm tired of being good at Twitter. I think. And how long has this been going on? Nine minutes. I'm gonna end it soon. Uh, I just wanted to say. I guess this was a reflection about like psychological and emotional well-being and I I think even in the course of this video I don't know how much how visible it's been but I I started out a little bit ah, I got I think I should make a video but the, pro, the the 
the process of expressing myself is and allowing myself to express myself is relief and i i think there's a part of me that it's always been this part of me that's like oh once you do it really well like you're done and that's not true you have to do it continually it has to be a practice and i don't practice much and i would like to change that i would like to get in, more into the habit of of expressing myself right and uh i want to spend more time with friends and i want to spend more time writing i think uh, yeah i've been wanting to just be more deliberate about my life and maybe i'll make a second video about that so i'll stop the recording here done